organizations don't do performance testing. Well, they, they, they may have a little testing tool on the show. Yeah. And maybe if they did it once or twice. I think performance testing, I think, is a complicated type project, and it's easier uh, to manually test. It's easier to write QTT scripts. But then when it comes to actually saying, okay, let's do something, you know, where we have to coordinate with all these parties, as you said, and get these guys all in the same room and share resources and then do some analysis on it, I think it just gets to the point where people are like, let's just throw it out there and see if it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll patch it if we have to. But, you know, or we'll, throw, we'll buy three more CPUs or whatever it is and add it to the, add it to the machine. So that's called facility planning, right? <laughs> capacity planning. <laughs> yeah, capacity planning. Larry, you uh, mentioned about uh, performance testing on the cloud as well. But on the cloud, would there be any latency issue? If your application is going to be served on the internet, then in real life situation, everything is everything has latency. But um, if your application is serving your uh, internal users in an organization, then uh, you probably don't want to do that. Access to data to the one that they have to Now there's HP performance. Like, they're linked to HP. Performance Center. Yeah, uh, Lowland is part of HP Performance Center. Yeah. So in HP Performance Center, like, they have Lowland and a couple of the monitoring tools that you can put on your server or infrastructure mm -hmm. to do the real time monitoring. As far as I know, there is only one load test tool from HP, which is Low Runner. Performance Center, Package, Low Runner, up with, along with the other uh, monitoring tool from HP, uh, things like SiteScope or I forgot the other names, but they have so many, uh, and maybe it comes with Forty Center too. So it's just other packages from HP, but if you talk, talk about just uh, doing the load testing, If you have, let's say, 200 users and every user has uh, different data, how, how can you tell something more how these data are generated? That, like username or... Or, or, da or data for every user, how, how, it is, how it is generated, some kind of loop and you are increasing counter and the, the way the name of the user is changed, just from a technical point of view, how it is. So let's say in the script, um, I think it's just uh, something Call the script, we call um, a login action. You type in join and then pass it as a password, and then you click login. So that will show up in your script. Now, when you look at your code in your script, you will replace that with, say, username variable. Thunder, you can reference 
does that verb to read from a text file? So let's call it username.txt. And it has all the usernames there. Thousands, two, two thousand, three thousand, whatever. And when the script runs, the script will know, okay, I have to enter a username from here. So we find the username and place it there as parameterization. And you can set different behavior for that. Uh, the, the script can either take one row at a time sequential, or they can pick random ones. Things like that, different behaviors. Thank you. And so in the same place, you would associate any user specific information. You can. So it would also be variableized and or parameterized and it would be looked up. You don't know that you were John, right? And, or John was row five and you would do all the data from row yep, five. Yep. You don't need separate uh, data file for everything. You can have one master data file if they are certain association with uh, the data. So user, password, address, um, account number, whatever. You can have all these in one central uh, text file or data file. So they can pick different columns for the data for certain roles. So generally, like you said at the beginning, you could use production data, which ideally you would mask. Um, or you could generate it using a script of some kind, and it would just be like John 1, John 2, John 3, John 4, or something like that, right? <coughs> but you wouldn't want to manage that yourself manually if you had thousands of people. <laughs> Trust me. You don't want to do it. <laughs> Because when we do test automation, there are quite a lot of maintenance to do from different builds to uh, from, from build to build, from version to version. Performance testing, we are really not testing functionality. It should be really not changing at all the application. So um, in terms of maintenance, it should be really, really minimal. Unless you are using the same script on another platform or a very minor upgrade of the system. In that sense, you recommend to start testing once the system on the test is stable enough to Yes, use. yes. Or, or at least the features that you are testing are stable enough. Other areas you may not care, but these are features that you are testing. The scenarios that you are testing are should be functional, stable. For yeah, we made a mistake to start early. So every cycle we have to redo everything, right? Yes. I think it depends change. on how you attack the, uh, the performance test then, because you should be able to do some performance testing early, but if you try and performance test a scenario or a task, then yeah, you'll be in, you'll be in trouble because somebody will change something and work for a while. Yeah, for example, we started testing and we didn't have the login functionality, right? right. So I didn't need a login. <laughs> <laughs> Two cycles after, uh, oh, this is a yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. well, um, now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if we talk about maintenance and changes, um, the same rule applies to performance test scripting and test automation scripting. Um, you change something, you have to maintain or change your script to make it to work again. Same with manual testing, yeah. Okay, um, it, it can be any kind.